Gentlemen, oh, do we need to sing? Oh, do we need to sing? Rearrange this. Gotta, gotta keep old JJ up in there in the block. Some people have been asking me about what's actually in the background. There, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. Um. It, anyways, <laughs> sorry. Thanks for tuning in. We are in the uh, the turtleneck. Is that what they call these? The zip up turtlenecks. And, and underneath. We got the Loose Video logo. Now, Loose and me, you know, there was a situation about, well, first of all, 2019 when I was running around the country pulling 200,000 miles with some of the stuff we're going to discuss today, actually talking about what I was talking about, breaking idolization, actually breaking mental spells that people actually have in the sport. Um, There is a lot of, of things that is wrong with this sport mentally. I mean, outside of, you know, uh, short man syndrome. But um, we were running around. We got to PA. And Loose Video, who had heard about me at the time, was hanging out the Steve Buckwalter car. And I was like, everybody was wanting to kick my ass at the time. Or, or some people were. It, it was a weird deal. Some people wanted to whoop my ass. And some people wanted to take a picture and love me and help me and be around me or take me to the bedroom or whatever, you know. It was very interesting in that year. It was very Trumpish. You either loved me or you wanted to put me away forever. You know, it was that type of thing. And and we had the idea of him putting a headlock on me and, and putting it on camera and posting it on Facebook. And he did. And my oh my did he run with that one. That one was one of the most uh hilarious posts outside of potentially the, the next closest hilarious post would have been me and Kyle Larson in victory lane and me giving Caitlin the beer and everything when he won his first late model debut at Port Royal. That one in 2020 was pretty close to breaking the internet. At least that's what some people said. They, they, well, I think the one caption on that was like, proof that uh, 2020 couldn't get any more fucked up. You know, it was like, did I just sell censor? I think I did when I said fucked up. You know, look at that. I know how to do it. I, I can be smart. Oh, I can be smart. Um, but anyway, to start this off with what's around me here, what, what is around me here? So over here, this is a Patrick Crobb guy. Uh, this is an award, um, for event, actually event promotion, uh, an event promotion award. Yes, that is a Masonic symbolism, but regardless, we're here trying to tell you the truth. I, I mean, some people will call me a narc at, at this point. Um, I love that sign, my sense of humor. May hurt your feelings. We got this badass uh, Sammy Swindell poster in the background. We got this over here, which is pretty pretty badass, actually. Hopefully, we don't fall down. This was actually a, uh, some people may remember, I think it was 20, I want to say 2014 Chili Bowl. There was a guy walking around with an Iron Man mask, but it had been painted all gold. And I, I had made the joke there that that was the the golden, I was going to the, I wore, that was me, by the way. I was the golden driller, you know, instead of Iron Man. I took the Iron Man mask, painted it all gold. And they sell these tees at the Chili Bowl. This is back when the Chili Bowl was good. They sell these tees. And original, it's, it's broke, unfortunately. But originally, it's like a yellow, clear, uh, almost a tea color. But we took that same spray paint. And spray painted this that same gold, so it was like a golden driller type of deal. And then had uh, Kevin Swindell and Sammy Swindell sign it. Of course, one of his sponsors was a big supporter of mine at the time. Uh, of course, I was doing things down there at Devil's Bow. Um, next to that, up here, we got a bunch of awards. That's a helmet I've had since like five years old. Actually fractured my arm at like six wearing that. Luckily, I had that actually. Um, that's still wide open, Brad Doty's book. That's the trophy I won at Penn's Creek when I went and whooped all their asses and showed them the difference between the A and the ER at Penn's Creek in the, in the, um, go-kart division. That's a, uh, Speedway Collector's numbered Devil's Bow Speedway car that I was gifted while I worked there. And this, this is what we are talking about today. So this is a... 
handout, I guess, or a, well, no, this is, read that, newsworthy. And this is clippings from a newspaper, from a newspaper, sorry, I think the mic, from a newspaper that uh, First State Bank sent me as a gift for being newsworthy. It says it is it is gratifying to receive recognition for one's accomplishments in the community and celebration of life's special occasions is simply more meaningful when shared and enjoyed with others. Your friends at First State Bank, which was the biggest, well, one of the biggest banks in the community of the local area racetrack in Mesquite, Texas, your friends at First State Bank want to offer their congratulations and let you know they thought you were newsworthy. And so this is a, a clipping out of a newspaper uh, where I was interviewed. Chaz Thompson, Speedway announcer, multimedia manager, basically doing all that I could. Uh, and it was a five-on-three article where they asked me a bunch of things, and it was talking about, I believe this was 2014. Once again, some interesting things happening in 2014. How many years ago is that? We're going to do some math tonight, maybe go down a rabbit hole. Um, Devil's Bow Speedway in their 43 years, blah, 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 blah. They're, they have these hosted races, all this and that. And uh, it was a questionnaire at the back. And it said, what does your business offer that is unique compared to uh, similar businesses? I uh, responded and said, we offer a unique form of motorsport that showcases tremendous driving skill and daring nerves. To the common person, sliding a vehicle is out of control. We are able to display that out of control attitude with a full field of race cars traveling at speeds in excess of 140 miles per hour. Uh, they asked, what is the most important part of your job on a daily basis? I said, branding, graphic design, television and radio production, social media managing, and, mar and marketing. They said, what are your keys to success? And this is the big one. And see, at this point of my life, Jeff Gordon was my favorite driver and had been my entire life. But this 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 rabbit hole, I don't I don't just blame streaming. I go a little deeper on stuff. I, I I actually researched why I feel the way I feel for a while, and there's a reason I changed it. It says, What are your, your keys to success? I said, relevance. We need to get the general public's eye on our form of motorsport. Most people do not even know it exists. We need more people to know what we are. What surprises you? most about your job next question how much the fans are dedicated or how much the fans of the sport are dedicated they will sit in 100 degree heat or 20 degree cold to watch their favorite drivers race tell us something most wouldn't know about your company and this is a, a real situation that i think a lot of people need to break this is a stereotype that is very important to increase that relevance I responded and said, how much money everything costs? Most people would view our sport as a redneck type of thing, especially here in, in the Americas. I'm not sure about you Aussie people. In reality, it's business owners and millionaires out there on the track. Racing is not cheap. The cheapest division to race in would be the factory stock division, which was for our area. And you would still need around 25000 or more in expendable in income to be able to afford a, uh, to race a full season. In other divisions, like the USRA Modified, just the vehicle can, alone can cost in excess of $50,000. And this was 2014, keep in mind. More prestigious divisions, like the World of Outlaws, have engines that cost 65000 and a total cost of around ninety thousand, with best of the best, with the best of the best parts available on the car. Tell us something most people wouldn't know. Most people do view it as a as a redneck sport, but even the cheapest division, somebody, and this goes back to respecting the drivers who are twenty five to thirty five years old in this sport of racing. Period. Period. From the bottom to the top. When, when it takes about twenty five grand to race your bomber division for a year down the street, which it does, it's about that much. That's a lot of hard-ass work somebody's got to figure out how to make. And not everybody is born in privileged positions. 
So that's why, personally, I mean, these are this is a 2014 article, by the way. And some people have heard this same old drum be, be beaten a little bit. And a lot of people believe in that drum, just like I do. I believe in the merit of America and the merit in motorsports and a competitive form of sport. Um, and, and if you ignore these things, you end up becoming locked in idolization. So this a little bit of the what's behind me, I guess. I mean, that's 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 there. Now, I'm sure there's some other stuff. Uh, that I could pull up and all that, but um, that is is very actually interesting too. I didn't even have that plan. That was perfect actually to lead into promoting because I am, I was sick and tired of blaming every excuse there was in the world for why there wasn't a person or there, there was people in the grandstand, but why it wasn't more fluent. Why well, and a lot of dirt track promoters out there, y'all experience the things that I'm I'm talking about. Why isn't it as consistent? Why are we worried about selling hot dogs? Why don't we have a salad on the menu? Why why are we in this hole which we were not were, at one point was not. And and I think that it just takes a lot of work, you know? And then even 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 a promoter in itself and this is why I titled the video, or the thumbnail that is, so you think you promote. I think that the problem with modern promoters is that you're not a promoter, technically. Now, I mean, we could, I, I had definitions. I wanted to give some shout outs and all that, but the, the flow is flowing. And that's what this show's all about. Oh, by the way, this isn't factual or a hundred percent true, or or whatever kind of BS you need to tell yourself to not be offended. This is just an opinion. This is what I think. Um, but I I think that pro- modern dirt promoters are not just promoters, and the actual promoting aspect of a racetrack or an event sometimes gets shuffled back to like one of the last things you're caring about, like. Worrying about selling food is not promoting the event. Worried about um, working the track. Worried about uh, this and that. Now, these are management positions. These are things that the promoters uh, have to end up uh, uh, taking on because there is such a lack in financial ability to hire proper people and then lack of interest as well because the relevance of the sport has been in the garbage for so many years. So there's a lack of interest in people wanting to be involved and wanting to make something of nothing. And this is going for the American racing scene, I would say outside of the Pennsylvania area because they kind of have a really good deal. Shindig going over there, but I still think it could apply to them. But there are a few people over there that do it right. I will say that. There are some things that happen over there that are correct, but it's probably more because of proper funding. Now, I think that modern promoters end up doing all these things, all these tasks, got to manage this and and manage that and make sure this is correct and have this money here and have the uh, the, the, the talks with the drivers and making trying to get the event worth seeing. But then I feel like the actual promotion of the event kind of becomes lacking. And then, and it's a lot. I mean, like I said, it's it's a lot. I, I've personally drove thousands of miles around trying to promote events, just promote them, and it's a lot. You know, it, it's not easy to to promote. The promote job aspect of a promoter of an event is a full time job in itself. So when you throw all these other things on top of their ass, they're in the they're in the gutter, and then they ain't got much money to begin with. I mean, some of them do, some of them don't, but. When you consider how much some of these events cost to put on, you know, I've been in the back rooms. I know what's being lost on a weekly basis. I'm not stupid. That's why I cared about so much to try to figure out why it's happening to fix it and why I was a Jeff Gordon fan and am no longer. We can, we, 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 most people already know what I'm talking about. And if you cheer for Kyle Larson in today's society for the same type of reasons, it's just it's a Jeff Gordon part two. But it's a manipulational ploy. I'm not stupid. I understand that Smokey and the Bandit sold Trans Ams. I'm not dumb. 
I, I understand how this works. I understand that Formula One is the number one motorsport in the ages below 28 years old in America because of Netflix. I'm not dumb. Some sometimes get lost in the show and stay locked into the show and don't break it. They just stay locked into the show. They still idolize. It's a, it's a lack of self-reflection. So there is a notion out there to blame streaming currently in society as far as promoters are concerned. And the reason I said, do you actually promote, is that quintessential need to actually promote an event. For instance, if, if all the local school districts within a 30-mile radius don't know who you are, you're not promoting. If local nightclubs in the off-season that you're up against, by the way, oh yeah, you're up against that hot, sexy girl at the bar every Saturday night. That's your competition. Because she sure as hell ain't coming to your dirt track and ruining her $300 hair. So you're up against that. Or you can work with that as well. You can barter. You know, be in a Saturday, Friday night situation. You're up against the, the shit that, that the NFL and people stay away from. They don't want to go up against Taylor Swift. They don't want to go up against these people. When we're competing for people, and when I, when I talk about people, what are we talking about? We're talking about people. So, first aspect of actually understanding what you could be or should be promoting is, is you have to go and see, like, who's in your area. Like, how many people are there? You know, and how many people you need to financially be viable in uh, a sense of selling tickets. If, if, you, if you're a venue... Seats 25, 3,000 people. So you need 3,000 people. Okay, so now how many people, and I've done this, how many people are in your vicinity that you need to attract? How many people are in the vicinity that you need to attract? And it's very hard. This is not a simplest issue. This is not a simplest issue. This is a very complicated issue. So you got to look at populations. You got to go and start doing the numbers. Um, Hold on. We won't use Tampa Bay for an example. Let's see. Let's just do what I did. Let's just do what I did. Dallas, Fort Worth, or let's do Dallas. We'll stay in the Dallas area. So Dallas population is 1.2 million people. Okay, so you got to figure out a way to get 2,500 of 1.2 million. Okay, so the, the numbers are very, very in your favor. You, you need what? A point, oh, what, 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 hold on, hold on. We'll just use chat GTP. What is 2,500 of one point? Oh, 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 they won't even give it to you. Hold on. Let's see if the uh, chat will will give it to you. So, you okay, there you go. Chat, chat GBT. By the way, on, on Bing, you can scroll up and it, and it will talk to you. So you need 0.198% of the population of your surrounding area. So now you know what you're after. You know what you... You know what you need to get. And then now you have to go get them. Now you have to go find a way. Like I said, schools, I would suggest all your racetracks. You need to go to the local politicians. You need to get into your local politics because those are the guys who will move you out eventually if you don't get in with them. And I think that's where uh, tracks like Port Royal is doing an amazing job. I think I think I believe BAPS is somewhat trying to do the same. Those are number one. Almost th- those are number one because if you get if you can get into the local politics on the right side of it, don't go in there, fuck you. Oh, I didn't sell censor, but regardless, don't go in there, you know, uh, you know, uh, step on my yard guy. But go in there with some actual understanding, try to explain what I can bring, what we can do. And then that's going to basically open you up to be able to reach all these local businesses and school districts and all these regions to be able to properly promote so that you can get that 0.198% that you need to be able to be profitable. And, and like I said, to reach the people. See this, every business, I don't care who it is, in the entertainment or restaurant or bars or any of it, you need 20% diehards and 80% rotationals. That means 20% of the people who are there are your drunks, for instance, in the bar world, 
And then the 80%, the, the, the majority who's in your establishment has to be people who come there once a year or twice a year or three times a year. So you have to be able to get that 0 0.92 or 0.19 to probably like 0 0.15, and then you could probably times it by 16. So now you need, what is that? You need 1.5% of the population to at least come to your facility. And there's ways to do that. But I feel like when people blame, and there's a lot of blame game. There's a lot of work not being done in what I'm talking about. A lot of work not being done in what I'm talking about. Because the old excuse 10, 15 years ago was there's so many things to do. So many things to do on a Saturday night. So many things to do. But I go down that local district, they don't know who the fuck you are. This, this, this business over here, never heard of you. What's your name? Three miles away. Who are you? What's your name? What's th there's a track? So don't worry about fixing that. Just blame streaming. Who's only concerned about the 20%? That's who you're losing in the streaming game. You're not losing new fans. There ain't no new people about to fuck, put $150 in the flow, which is the issue in a way. I think that streaming should help could help. I think there should be some kind of taste trial period or something along those lines, but you you aren't... The, the Flo and, and the Dirt Vision is the best things they're doing, and they are doing a good job at this. They're providing at least highlights. Like, when I was... Uh, well, not promoting, but when I was on the road, I would go around to local big areas and, I guess, promote for free, and in these bars, eateries, um, rest, uh, j just different places I would go, I would at least be able to pull my phone out, go to YouTube or Facebook, pull up a flow video or a dirt vision video and show these people what is happening down the street. And that's not going to get them to want to go buy the stream. That Once again, that's going after the 20%. It's the lack of work and effort to pursue the 80%. That is the problem. Now, I know there's some promoters out there. And, and, and once again, you probably, if you know what I'm talking about, you're cheering along with me. Because you're putting in, who are doing what I'm talking about, you're putting in this effort and are still struggling, and that's when I, that's where I revert to the relevance. That's why I'm not a Jeff Gordon fan no more, because I know what respect's all about. We're America. We don't like Robin. We don't pay to ro watch ro Robin. We pay to watch Batman, and unfortunately in this dirt world, we only got one, at least in the sprint car side. And there's, there's schematics behind that. There's schematics behind that. Go to Clearwater. Figure it out. Uh, do you know what Dianetics is? Regardless. <laughs> wow. Regardless, I know some of y'all are doing what I'm talking about, but y'all are probably cheering along because you witness these other guys that you know are not doing it, and they're crying and bitching. They're the ones that are probably used to the 80s, where they just had a racetrack, and driving cars in circles on a dirt track was this new thing that no one ever heard of before. And people just came out to do it because there wasn't a lot of things to do. But now in today's society, the competition's up, and they're used to a certain level of effort. And never rose it, where you have. I think there's a lot of new blood out there that could come in and, and who love the sport and actually make some differences. But the egos, once again, the egos of wanting to say, I did this, I did that, are holding it back. I saw a post, and even though the guy did do something here recently, promoted an event, was a great event, did all the stuff I'm talking about, but the I, I, I was a little too big over a logo that could have potentially and was looking like it was supporting the event. So that I, I, I ego is really what's going to kill everything. That's what's going to fuck it up. But once again, streaming is just what so many things to do on a Saturday night was 10 years ago. You know, if you're not putting in the, the actual promotion work, and I understand some of you are just, like I said, you're doing food management, you're doing track management, you're doing... Uh, payroll management, you're doing all these things and you can't pay for another guy and you have a lot of excuses, a lot of reasons. I wouldn't even call that a re an excuse. That is a reason. That is a reason. But promoter jobs are not 9 to 5. Promoter jobs are 24-7, 365. Like right now, all these local tracks and in, in regions across the country more than likely are just taking time off when you should be pursuing. This is when you pursue those clubs on the Saturday and Friday nights and, and put a cardboard cutout of your star inside of it. You, you bring a group of drivers or you bring cars 
to that facility and promote them, make them a big fucking deal that now everybody wants to go see. You got to create icons. We used to have local racing icons. We used to have dirt track icons. Late models still kind of do, but the sprint cars don't. But that's because there was a guy who put a special set of match tires on and fucked all your minds up into a golden black Trans Am. Now, that, that has sold very well, and that was probably the next level marketing that really did a hell of a job. They did it perfectly. But just like Netflix, you have to capture the reality of the situation. Like, there's a lot of people not doing that. Now, once again, promoters who are doing all these other jobs that they technically shouldn't be doing, and this is why there is a title called event promoter that isn't necessarily the money man who runs the show. They will hire event promoters to come in and promote events. I personally have succeeded and failed in that. There's sometimes you could try as much as you want and you're just going to lose and you got to figure out what I did wrong, what I did right, and you got to adjust. But just like the fucking track at the A-Main of the shootout in the the fucking Chili Bowl, if you're doing the same shit over and over and it's not right over and over, you got to try something different. Or that's when the blame game comes along and you say too many people or too many things to do or, 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 or maybe you just, you know, say streaming's to blame for attracting the 80% that you need to have a successful business in the world. So I'm, I'm sorry that I went on a, a little bit of a rant there. I just see so much, and, and streaming people are trying so hard. I just see so much scapegoating, so much excuses, so much unreasonable reasoning. And, and, and some of these people are more than likely having to do six other jobs and, and not able to attend that job, not able to do that. And, and that's why I would turn uh, to a, a decent a, a strategy that Australia is using right now. Uh, I heard... Or at least I was in a conversation with a guy earlier. We I may mention him, his name next time if he wants to be mentioned. But he says over at Bunbury, which is a track on the western side of Australia, they actually have a group of people. It's a club that promotes the facility. And they're able to get 4,000 people there. Because there's more than one person sort of responsible for promoting the event, promoting, letting the population around you, the eight, the the. 1.2 million people know that they're that trying to get that 0.19%. They're out there collectively letting the, the surrounding areas know who you are and what you're doing this week. It's not just on the backs of one guy. But I do think that the backs of one guy goes back to the ego. That one guy more than likely wants to say, I did this, I did that, I'm the reason this succeeds. And guess what? You are also potentially the reason it may fail for most of the year. There needs to be a lot more we and us in motorsports. This I thing is killing a lot of stuff. This ego is really ruining it. Hell, you could be so successful in the western part of Australia that now Cole wants to come along and, and join the ship. Didn't want to come when no one was talking about it. Now people are talking about it. Now he wants to show up and, and collect a bag too. So, I think the ego is an issue. Is an issue. But at the end of the day, Maybe that that Bunbury start style deal. Maybe maybe some promoters out there. If you would just hear what I what I explain, and you're like, yeah, man, I'm worried about hot dogs and freaking making the track right and all this shit. I can't be, I can't devote the time needed to attract that eighty percent. Maybe I need to understand that that eighty percent is 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 my responsibility to attract, and that streaming isn't touching one of those people, and that I have to. It's my job to attract those 80%. The moment I say streaming is the moment I said, I'm failing. I can't can't do it. And and, and the moment you say streaming, you're you're kind of being an asshole because the people in streaming are are trying and working really hard too. You know, but, but they're after that 20%. They're after your diehards. They're after your diehards. The act of promoting is not promoting to diehards. The act of promoting is is promoting to those people who don't even know what you are. Hearing about something they haven't heard about before. Who is the guy that, who is the messenger of that transaction? Oh, the promoter. 
Now, flow and, and dirt vision, once again, can be assets in attracting those 80%. But if you're sitting there and you can't look at yourself in the mirror and say, I might be doing something wrong, and you're blaming something, like I said, 10 years ago, it was too many things to do. Now, today, it's streaming. If that's what you're going to do, then you're never going to progress, and you're going to close down. So, and I understand, look, look, this is hard. What I'm talking about is hard. That, that, that damn piece of paper up there, <coughs> like I said, it's hard to get that piece of paper. And, it, and I was doing just as much as you could do. And it, it, it's hard to make a difference. But once again, I did research as to why. I don't just ask, I don't see something that's wrong and say, oh, well, it's just wrong. I, I see something that's wrong and I'm like, why is it wrong? Let me figure out why. Let me, let me go figure this out. Let me research this. How important is respect? 1990, local racing is professional racing drivers, and now it's grassroots. Does respect matter? Do people show up to watch the second or third best basketball players, or do they, or do they show up to watch the best? Why do they not think that they are the best? Money? Oh. Materialism, potentially. That's why I was mentioning the, the money dollar cents. The perspective of what you have out there on the track. Very, very important. Extremely important. And that's where I sympathize. You could pour your guts into it, but you got a big battle to beat when you're up against idolization. Or, once again, you could look into Dianetics. They figured it out a long time ago. It's not hard. 100-year plans. Five is typical, but the good ones are 100. Regardless, regardless. I just, uh, maybe that Bunbury way could be a way that some of y'all think about it. But that 80% is where your track's closing down. And, and as long as streaming is an excuse, you're never going to address the problem. It's called a scapegoat. You got to get rid of the scapegoats and build a goat. That's what they did. It's worked. Regardless. I, I know I just went off a little bit. It's, it's a very... Like I say, touching subject for me when I see excuses, man. I hate excuses. Go to fucking work. Not on the tractor, not with your food in the back. Those are jobs. Go to that work. And if you can't do it on your own, do the Bunbury group way. Get a group going. Get a club going. I'm sure there's a bunch of diehard fans and people, supporters, and I know that y'all try to do that when you tell these drivers it's their responsibility to post on their Facebook to promote the track this week. Okay, well, that, that's cool. But who's getting out there into the communities? Not the racers' friends. I mean, it helps. But who's getting to these people who don't know what it is? And then who's telling those people who don't know what it is how it operates? See, that's when I get into the relevance and the respect. Because then you go and look into that. Who is on the television telling them what's a pro and what's a grassroots driver? Who is out there emulating as if they are the NFL of, of what we do here? Who is technically um, defaming my roster of drivers? This is where y'all, good drivers don't come from here. Good drivers are here. Oh, you got that one character that's just so much better than everyone else, and you can stake your mantle onto that guy as to why your roster is better than everyone in dirt. And then some people cheer that on and don't understand the game that is being played. But then see, that's when it comes to realization of what's actually happening. Well, and then there's a the Robin Hood effect too. The Robin Hood effect, you know, steal from the rich, give to the poor. So that that is the element. That's why we have high limit, I think, right? Steal from the rich, give to the poor. It's, it's an economic system in a way. It's a microcosm for sure. But regardless... Some are in the grass and some are on the porch. Anyways, I don't want to get too going on that because I can deep dive extremely well. But the Bunbury group deal was very intriguing. Learned about that yesterday. How you have a group that actually gets together and make th makes things happen. I just The bigger point here to me, guys, to say to potential people who are watching, who are involved in racetracks, and some people know exactly what the hell I'm talking about, that 80% that is going to make you succeed or close, streaming ain't doing a damn thing to them. 
you are. And that's the difference. That's the difference. I, I don't know a damn person that ain't been to a dirt track about to drop 150 on flow. I, uh, something they never heard about. But they may drop 10 or 15 or 20 bucks to come check it out one night. Oh, I wonder who's going to make the money there. That sounds like a little bit of a lesser investment for that new person. But excuses. Excuses, excuses. That's what I hear. Excuses, excuses. And, and once again, to the guy who's doing it all, there's some ideas. Get some groups. Get some people together. Formulate something. Make something happen. Make something work. Instead of just telling everyone why it's broken and it isn't me. Just I, I And then I, I, me personally, knowing the effort I put in, I look at some of these people who say it, and then I go look at what they actually have been doing. What that, what have, where's that work? And it's, it's basically empty. And I'm just like, oh my God, it infuriates me so bad. When I go and see the work put in, it's empty. And they're blaming someone else. I just, I, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't. I gotta, I gotta move subjects. I mean, I'm sure the freaking chat in here is just like, fuck you, Chaz. But, whew. I, I mean, I, I just, I just don't know. I just don't know. Oh. Uh, didn't they show Australian races on Dirt Vision before? The Hot Sexy Girl's still going to be at the track. Oh, my God, they're not even on a topic. The, the YouTube chat isn't even on a topic. Oh, they just saw me go off a little bit, and everybody left. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Chaz, it's 1222, 1022 here. Let's see here. Let's go up to... Oh, we can't. Oh, hold on. What do you think about Top Gun Sprints going with the ASCS 360? They should have went to 305s. ASCS 360 is just going to destroy that entire uh, situation. Um, that area of the country does not have a predominant uh, 360 racing scene. 360 Sprint Car Motors and 360 Racing is a, a class that is being slowly pushed out. There is no future. The future of Sprint Car Racing, in my opinion, is going to be 305s and 410s. Uh, the moment 360s eclipse the $35,000 amount to be competitive, that class went to hell. So once again, more nepotism monarchy. That whole Florida scene's got big, big issues. Big, big issues. Big issues. They should have went 305. It would have fixed everything. At least it's halfway affordable. A 360 deal. You're going to have two or three guys who can afford the, you know, big hammer hitter motors, and they're going to dominate the racing scene. And then you're going to have a few guys who just throw shit together and, and show up. So that's what's going to happen, in my opinion. Um... There was some good things. Hold on. There was some good things. So I guess we could talk about something nice, right? We can talk about something nice. Um, this was shared by uh, Alyssa Rowe Racing, showing how it was used, it used to be done. Proper promotion. <laughs> I know people want to blame flatbeds, too. Uh, nope, nope. Flatbeds haven't uh, replaced respect within society. I mean, flatbeds did do a lot, you know, to show the cars off, but... Promoters also used to do car shows and take cars to venues and show the cars to people at events and, and actually promote. So, I mean, there, there's a couple things missing there. Um, regardless, uh, this is a nice, very nice, uh, hand-lettered, modified. I mean, how this guy does the, the lettering and the numbers there is beautiful. Um, just amazing. Now, I did make a comment on this post, you know, that has to make it suck really bad the first door you get hit with because it destroys all this nice work that was put in and you'd have to re-letter or maybe you could just go back and touch up, but somebody said that's why they have been going to wraps um, here recently is because the wraps are a little easier to replace when you get them dinged up and hit and doored and all that stuff. So I have a feeling if this guy's at the track watching it, if he's involved with the team or goes to the track, weekly and this car gets hit that it hurts a little bit more uh than um if it was wrapped but this was just awesome this was just really really cool um i see some people that i know looking and watching this um this page here i believe that this is a fate i'm pretty sure and i, I want to put the word out this is a fake Chili Bowl page. There has been some BS streaming, uh, live stream links that have been thrown around. And it is from, most of the time, fake pages like this trying to manipulate and act like they are the promoter of, or they are the, the event. 
Um, and this this page, for instance, was created a day ago. It's already got 139 friends. Um, it's got people within the racing world as its friend and even has tagged uh, Mariah Eid, great racer out of the West Coast, and Brock Barrett. I believe they are racing uh, for the the, the Dolby um, Macintosh uh, connection. But they are tagging like actual people, and hopefully it's not somebody from that area. But more than likely, what this page will end up doing is come Chili Bowl week, they will start posting the fake links to watch the Chili Bowl on this page. So, um, obviously, they, they tried to friend request me. I'm going to delete it. Uh, but obviously, they're trying to emulate something. It says Chili Bow Nationals dot official. It's definitely not the official page. I would not think it is at all just based on what it's looking like. Um, they even use the Chili Bow Nationals iRacing logo, uh, which to try to continually emulate. So if you are a friend of this page, keep an eye out as well for fake links. FlowRacing.com is going to have all of the uh, you know links and things to watch and all this stuff. But I've seen a lot of, I guess, live stream hijackers. Uh, you would call it trying to put links out into the racing and and rate and just community, maybe trying to trick some of those 80% that I was talking about earlier to clicking a link, watch live for free. And then more than likely it will have some kind of hijacker account on the back end. If people do give its card account information, it will more than likely try to uh, do some sc- type of scamming on, on your stuff as well. So, be aware of some of these fake pages. I just noticed this. I want to, you know, kind of highlight it because I, I know some of the people that are on the friends list here. Uh, these types of pages are on the uprise. I believe Gateway Dirt Nationals dealt with the same thing. Um, so this is something that you should pay attention to. Speaking of streaming, there is a lot of badass races happening today uh, in Australia. Um, the Red Hot Summer Shootout. I believe this is a three-day, yes, it's a three-day event. 5,000 to win preliminaries, I believe, and then 30,000 to win on uh, the final night. Uh, These will all be happening in the midst of the night. Uh, I believe coming up here soon, actually, they're going to start racing. You can actually watch now uh, this Toowoomba race, uh, and it says that uh, Sheldon Hoddenschild is going to be there. So Sheldon Hoddenschild has arrived over there in the Australian country. It looks like Hoddenschild, Macedo, Reitzel, Randall, Chase Randall, and more. Uh, and you can go watch that. Clay Per View, that's the clayperview.com. Uh, it looks like they are only doing single night access. And it looks like each night is 20 bucks, $19.99. Uh, Let's see if that final night's a little more. Yep. Just a little more twenty two ninety nine for that final event at Toowoomba. And then on the other side of the country, this is basically PA to California when we're talking about Toowoomba uh, to uh, Western Australia Speed Week. Um, you, you do have some races that are uh, going to happen. Hold on, let's see here. And these are those right here. Uh, Bunbury, which is the other facility, well-known facility, I guess you're going to call it. On the West Coast, the, the the track that is utilizing that kind of club group style promotional situation, um, they are going to be racing tomorrow and I believe the next day. I'm not so sure on that. I have to research a little bit more. But tomorrow they will be running, and that is where uh, Rico and Sweet are located at. So it's kind of interesting, kind of like the World of Outlaw group of drivers. You know, Hodden, Chow, Macedo are over here on the East Coast. And then the high limit style drivers, Elias, Enrico, and Sweet are over here on the West Coast. And that is also where Kyle Larson said he would like to go now that it looks all hot and bothered. But regardless, that's the situation. I am interested in going to that high tech if I can find a way to make it. Toowoomba is a decent uh, track. Um, It is not technically close uh, to anywhere I plan to be. Uh, but that's pretty much all I really had to say today. I mean, talking about that Bunbury group, how they do it, talking about the streaming. I mean, I'm tired of seeing lazy people blaming everything but themselves. It sucks. I blame myself all the time. Trust me. I blame myself. I do something stupid or do something wrong. I, I try to take all the blame, but then also try to see 
why it happened, how it happened, so I can make the necessary fixes to do it right, you know, the next time. Uh, and if it don't work, you just keep on trying and trying again. It's a definitely a, a trying sport, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, few adjustments to my potential Australia plans. It does look like we are going to... Uh, oh, hold on, hold on, look, look here. These fake links have been happening in Australia for a while. Do you think the owners of the page should be deleting and monitoring this because some pages don't do it? They should be reporting them. Uh, in Western Australia, all tracks are club ran except Northern Speedway, which is promoter by the property promoted by the property owner and the Motorplex, which is a government owned venue which has a promoter. Well, at least they have designated people who are supposed to promote the events. That's my bigger point here. I think a lot of promoters in the U.S. Don't give the attention that is needed <laughs> to that 80% and they blame everyone else and possibly because they are busy doing all these other jobs that they shouldn't even technically be doing. And that's being overworked and underpaid is a real thing in this racing world. Now, and, uh, let me raise my hand. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, I do think uh, my Australian plans are potentially changing. For the good. Um, obviously, over the last few years, I have went to Florida for speed weeks and all that. But even though it is getting spiced up and changed up a little bit with this high limit situation. I mean, I feel like that that Australian scene could use some attention. I'm a big fan of local regional driving and racing. Obviously, people know when I went up to PA for the World Outlaw Swing this year. I went over to Path Valley for some 305 stuff, regional guys, and West Coast. I went here instead of there. You know, it's just a, a situation where I am thinking of uh, trying to do all that I can. Uh, get over there, and potentially, it looks like, for sure, based on a few uh, uh, situations, if they happen here soon, that we will be extending the trip over to Perth on that side of the country for a few weeks, they got a big 30,000 to win race there in February. Uh, I think it's like eight races or five races in eight days over there. This is after the classic and after the title race, which if this does happen, I will be staying for the title race, the Australian title, uh, the week following the classic. And kind of given that area and region, which seems to have some badass hitters, that's one of the reason that, reasons I was a fan or still am a fan of the West Coast sprint car scene. There's a lot of badass hitters over there that people just don't get to hear about a lot. So almost a similar situation here. Um, Try to make sure we can do it. Potentially looking at riding in a truck for 36 hours from Warrnambool to Perth and then getting out of the country after all that racing is done. We do have one option, though, potentially, of catching a February 24th race at Toowoomba, some USC, United Sprint Car um, Club or something like that. USC. Not the college football USC, but some racing sprint car organizations over there. I don't know about that date. A lot of things have to happen to make that happen. But 95% sure, as we sit right now, we will be trekking over to the Perth and Bunbury side of the country of Australia to check that scene out. So we'll be able to mark off... Uh, Victoria's area there, Melbourne's area, the you know, a few tracks there, Simpson, Avalon, Borderline, uh, Premier, and then trek on over and check this area out that we've been watching a lot of, obviously that amazing race the other day uh, of Perth, and then this Bunbury track, pretty big track, heard it's really nice over there as well, and and, and mark that off of the this little trip, go around here, make, make every dollar of that plane ticket worth it in a way, and then potentially go check off Brisbane before we leave I, I don't know if that's how it's if it's possible I'm really really contemplating it like I said we never know life is finite you know you never a, a solar flare may happen next month you know last time I was gonna go to Australia and I said oh, I'll go next year and the vid happened the 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 disease happened and 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 it was like shut down and and kind of ruined the opportunities to go over there so I'm going to try to do all I can do while I'm over there. And if I got to rough it, I got to rough, uh, rough it. But once again, and it's been saying here in the video, and I, I once again forgot some people's names to put up there uh, in this video, actually. I probably should read those guys off. Uh, uh, Corey Fortman and Justin Setton, 
a few other guys. Uh, Brett Fisher, who is in the comment section, helped out a lot. Uh, Brian Stewart, Charles Ducart, and, and a lot of these guys I mentioned are like 20 bucks, 50 bucks, stuff like that. That's all going towards making this thing happen. Um, but potentially some bigger support is coming through in this Perth and potentially Brisbane situation. Perth is pretty much, like I said, 95%. Brisbane on the fence. But I, I want to run into some people, meet some people, that, and, and just check out these sceneries. And, and once again, in a life that is finite so that we can see what's uh, – what, what what there is over there. Check everything out. See everything out, uh, that you can see. Um, that's how I think life should be lived, through experience. I, I, I do, unfortunately, for myself at, at points, try to live life with a full life, not a full bank. And I think sometimes in life you got to choose. Do you want the money more or the life more? How much do you want to live versus how much you want to give? You know, I mean, that's kind of the balance I've been in, at least. And I try to live as much as I can. So lucky in an aspect, but... When I go on these trips, luckily I'm able to film it, do some nice things, make some nice content so that y'all kind of get to see what it's like as well. And based around this sport we all love called racing. And once again, for those promoters and people who I may have offended earlier, I'm not sorry. Some of you people need to hear it. I got these people all the time, you know, well, my friend tells me I'm this type of way and my friend tells me I'm this type of way. And it's like sometimes you just need to be told the damn truth. Some of these people are just lying to you. Now, the, the ones who go after that 80%, you know who you are, and you you shaking your head right ass with me. And some of y'all just can't handle Oh, they're mad now. Oh, they're mad. They're going next level. They can't handle it. I can't believe it. It's hard to look in that mirror, buddy. It's hard to look in that mirror. It's real hard. It's extremely tough. But this is a tough game. It's a tough game. And once again, maybe I'm wrong. I'm, I'm wrong. The 80% screw them. It's, streaming fa- it's streaming's fault. You can't reach them. That's fine. That's what you want to believe. This is just what I believe. It's what I think. Nothing personal. Just my opinion. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. I don't see too many chats coming in. Links are in the descriptions to uh, uh, join the support. Uh, we are going to be tuning in to that Tawamba event tonight it should be a good one it's this hot summer should shoot out i don't know how i'm gonna make it through the weekend uh, hopefully i don't uh I, I got some people who may help with the streaming but uh we'll see we'll see i see 1200 horsepower next gen off in there oh no what do we got in the comments oh god ray stebbins oh oh troll free tonight amazing i know hold on how about that i was i was sitting here like i'm gonna do all this and ranting and raving and i'm gonna come in here and see some guy trying to accuse me of being a racist again when actually those guys are the racists. <laughs> you know, that's the funny part. I even consulted after the show. I was like, could you believe this guy? And he's like, yep, that's one of them right there. That That's one of them. I am not from, uh, I think the reason I have the, the perspective with this 80% and have ventured to communities and places and have this real realistic perception of what an issue with the motorsport or dirt world is in America is because I, I've gone to different places than the woodsheds, you know. I've went off into the cities. I went off into different communities. I've communicated with people. I mean, we could show you. I went to the damn Chaz in Seattle when Black Lives Matter took the whole damn city over. Went in there talking just how I'm talking right now. Or talking how that guy says I'm being racist talking. I I did it all. I expanded my mindset. So I'm not big on the blame game, even though I'm sitting here and saying Cole Trickle and all this is, is, is a big issue. But it is. It's an issue that has not been addressed. It's an issue that I'm the only one talking about which is actually doing a lot of damage. That black Trans Am over there is kicking our ass. <laughs> and then we still cheer it on. We still cheer it on. It's just like the NASCAR rides. They turn into movies and they put in a new actor. It's like Spider-Man. You know, that Rusty Wallace has died so, or, or, or left the sport, so they just put in another driver and try to continue the movie, you know, the two-car, you know. Uh, you know, the 24 Jeff Gordon went away, and so they just try to put another driver in there. But they keep the movie the same, the actual car, the actual act. It's, it's it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And that pop culture de- definitely did a lot of uh, uh, damage. Kyle Kyle Bush once again, blue and yellow 18, Russ Wheeler. Telling you, bud. Not anymore, though. Not anymore. Kyle 18, Kyle. What, what do you mean, what's up? Where do we watch that and how much is it? If you want to, it's on Clay Per View. Um, Clay Per View is... The race tonight with with Hodenshaw, Macedo, Reitzel, 
and everybody is 20 bucks. They don't do a yearly deal over here. At least I ain't seen one. Um, but that is the link to the Toowoomba event tonight. It is a three day event, but the same drivers, the drivers will be there. Um, <laughs> great show. Chaz went, uh, Chaz went in there with a 10 gallon, te- uh, with a Texas 10 gallon hat and let them have it. I tried. Are you coming to Chili Bow this year? Nope. Not going to miss the Chili Bow at all. I'm just not going to miss the Chili Bow at all. Uh, maybe they won't rework the A-Main. It'll be worth it. And I'll miss out on something. Um, but I'm not going to beat the Chili Bow at all. I don't like the politics of that building at all. I don't, I don't, and I've, I've learned that if, and this is something people have to realize, even with your local tracks or series or things that you don't like, the thing that makes the difference is the money that you spend. If you don't like something about an event, stop supporting it. Don't go. I know it may suck, but at least like Flo's giving you the option to still watch it if you want to. But the moment you give them your money, you're, in, you're, you're enabling the situation. You know, the people who support the show and, and, and send in stuff, they are, they are the enablers who say, oh, this is good. I like this. They are the enablers. And it, it's most of the time people, you know, it's not corporations, but corporations fall underneath the idolization materialistic process. They're within the real Netflix, <laughs> the show of the world. But uh, what didn't you like about Chili Bowl? Well, I used to like Chili Bowl when it was about driving. Um, I do think it took a big hit with the lack of Larson and Rico. Uh, I used to first originally just go because it was the Chili Bowl, the Mystique, the the Pizzazz. But once you get in there and you see how things go, um, I don't know. It's just not. It's just not it for me anymore. It's just not it for me anymore. I watch it on flow, and, and potentially cheer for somebody who isn't a marquee person who's in with the game plan that has a chance to win. You know, I would like to see somebody who, you know, the issue is with the Chili Bowl is there's only about 25 car driver combos that can win that race. That's the problem with it. Uh, and I don't know if that's because TRD got in there. I, I, somebody drew a connection with that. How you doing there, 241 and Benny? Uh, somebody drew a connection with that on how big the Chili Bowl used to be and how Dan Boris is and all this could win a race and how you could really race on the track before they used to rework the whole damn thing. And I was like, it is pretty interesting that once TRD got involved, NASCAR development program, that those cars and, and, and car quality really took over the building. You know, and if you're not in a really good car, you know, if you ain't putting a close to 100000 in a midget just for that event, you don't got a chance. And there's just not a lot of guys willing to put that amount of money into it. You know, the Dave Step team, I'll be cheering them on, even though I don't really like a Team S person. Well, I, I can't really say that, but... The underdogs, the regular guys, you, you know, Tim McCready, Tim McCready, and I believe he's in the Rainbow car, be cheering that on. I, I believe Ricky Thornton Jr. is in the Rainbow car. I'll be cheering that on as well. It's going to be really good. It's going to be really good. What actually happened is Chaz Despaz decided to bully a nine-year-old on the internet. Not true. Actually, when Braxton Bush was awarded a provisional in an event that does not pay a lot of money and making the show is pretty much the reward, I had little kids crying. I had their parents coming up to me. Aren't you going to say something, Chaz? This isn't right. They've never done this. I'm watching little boys and cry. Uh, girls walk up to their dads and parents and ask them, why ain't I getting a provisional? Why is he? Why? We're supposed to be all the same on the racetrack. And then everyone's flooding me. Chaz, you have to say something. Chaz, you have to say something. This ain't right. Just because my little boy's name ain't Bush, he ain't going to get in the show, but he is? That's bullshit. That's what happened. And then scapegoats and Bia and Karens of the world, Karens of the world, like this support Brexton Bush, support that. They support monarchy and nepotism. You're right. A lot of the kids are well financially off. But when you get on these damn racetracks... Just like the female and everybody says, I put the helmet on, I'm a race car driver then. And it, just like the watch gate with Larson. The rules are supposed to be enforced to create fairness within the competition element of the sport. 
It shouldn't matter what your last name is or who you are on if those rules are enforced or engaged upon. And for an event like that, for an event like the shootout, which isn't a big paying gigantic event for little kids and, and, and all this stuff, making that show is supposed to be the payoff. Winning that is supposed to be the payoff. You know? And, and when you do that, it's just, it, and witnessing what I witnessed, you know, little kids are crying because you're, you're treating one of the other kids a different way over the competition. You're, you're pissing in competition's face. You're pissing in merit's face. Fairness and righteousness. In a sport, for crying out loud. I, that type of stuff is, is, is a great example. As to why I'm not stepping foot in that building. I don't support that shit. I went to the Chili Bowl that, later that year because a lot of people wanted me to go. I got back in the building after being kicked out of the building. I got back in for Chili Bowl because I believe there's a few people in there who are smart. Who understand it was wrong. But. There's a few people that don't. I'm not saying boycott the chili bowl, but for me, I'm not, I'm not stepping foot in the building again. I'm not doing it. Promoters give people provisionals all the time. Bulls Gap had daddy got the same treatment. Yeah, he did it. Bulls Gap. Some bullshit ass race. Not the Tulsa shootout, buddy. Not the chili bowl. Those, those provisionals are reserved for past champions. Because making those main events at the shootout in the chili bowl are supposed to be the prestigious accomplishment. And to give that accomplishment to somebody just because of who their daddy is, is disgusting. Is disgusting. And to do it in front of other little kids and other families is disgusting as well. And then when I tried to, like I said, whoever wants to go research, I tried to ignore it for about 45 minutes, but it just got too bad. It got too much. And all I did was interview some parents and Keith Coons who agreed. So regardless, yeah, yeah, 1,200 words. Obviously, I support Breston Bush guy knows what I'm talking about. Yes, I got kicked out for going live and interviewing two parents who were pissed and interviewing Keith Coons, asking them questions. What do you think about this? Do you think this is right or wrong? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the provisional was declined by the family. Should have been. But regardless, that's the true story. That's the truth, okay? That's the in-print paper. But yes, yes, it was just a provisional. For these people, these, these support Brexton Bush people, you're right. It's just a provisional to you. You aren't affected. You're just a, a clown. In, you're, you're, you're the noise in the stands. You're the noise in the stands. You're not over here seeing what I saw and hearing what I'm hearing and watching other little boys and girls cry too. And then you had the gumption to actually say and do something about it. And then you get removed from the building. You go step foot back over there. I ain't. Go support them. Go support them if you want to. I don't know what the devil is the details. This all played out two years ago live for everybody. This all happened live. Actually, on Lou's video's Facebook page. And the funny thing about that, Lou, it got so big that Lou's had to remove it from his page. Or else was sort of the notion. This is what I'm talking about, where the net of this whole motorsports world really does tingle out into everything. The octopus, as some people call it, I don't think it's that extreme, but that's how much these tentacles reach out. What are they crying about? Failing to qualify? No, they're, they're, they're crying about because they beat a guy and that guy's being advanced in front of them. Rexton Bush, I believe, finished fourth in his B main. They took the top two. Then when they did this, they tried to let everyone in. Although some people had already put their cars away because that's what happens because they kick you out of the building. And then it went back and forth. And then and then it went, uh, uh, we're going to let this just him in again. And then it went, oh, this guy on the internet just took our little trick that we had. We were just going to do behind the scenes over here and put it out for the world to see his bullshit. And then all of a sudden, uh, canceled. That's fine. That's fine. I don't know why you're bringing up stuff two years ago. I hadn't brought it up until you did. For the record. So you're the one still crying two years later. 
But I will defend myself on this, this whole entire subject. You want to sit here and say I bullied a nine-year-old? No. I defended righteousness. I stood up for what was right. I stood up for little boys and girls and other families. I did what was right. Fuck you. You weren't there, buddy. Obviously. And now, you are reported for bullying. This is harassing me. Yes, he is. Yep. Bye-bye. Regardless. That's what they did to me, right? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that's fine. And now I know how to go with it going forward, or deal with it going forward. Just don't go. I Just don't go. Although I probably could have. Uh, like I said, I went to the Chili Bowl the next month. Because some people see it as right. Man, I wanted to push an hour on the show. I wanted to at least get to an hour. And man, thank you, in a way. Support Braxton Bush, who is now reported and gone from the channel. Um, exactly. Exactly. And I was the only guy with the only decent amount of power in that building to do something else besides go along with the fucking plan. So, y'all go deal with these. Y'all go deal. That's why I wasn't there for shootout. I ain't going to see it happen again. Like I said the other day, they could say, oh, it ran smooth and ran this. Guarantee if you went and analyzed all those restarts and see who actually went early and then figured out who and why, you'd have a whole nother list of bullshit to deal with. I'm not going in that building again. Personally, I don't think so. Maybe if I get a written apology, I'll probably get a cease and desist. That's the attitude of that building, in my opinion. Regardless, that's my story and I'm sticking to it because it's 100% factual. That's why I can sit here and recount it because it's not made up. Regardless. Oh my God, look at this. Look at this. Nobody was kicked out. Wow, this guy is persistent once again. Wow. Anyways, we did Eclipse an hour. We'll let this Braxton Bush 2 just uh, keep on going. My local track's uh, winning pays almost in nothing. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Support Braxton is Spike. I hope he is. And he's creating a lot of Gmail accounts. I'll tell you what. Sprint cars and guitars isn't sticking up. He isn't sticking up for anyone. Okay. Okay. I've always tradition, or I mean, just like that paper from 2014 until now, I've always been about Merit. Like I started this whole thing off. Merit. Earning it. You know, there is a lot of stuff you can buy in this sport. A lot of stuff you can buy in this sport. And people are in positions because of that money or monetarily based, you know, kind of uh, entitled reasons. They're, they're in their positions because of entitled reasons, you know. Um, but... And it isn't fair, but the one thing that can be fair is our judgment of these people. And what's also supposed to be fair is the rules and regulations that everyone is supposed to be abiding by. Just like with, with the watch gate, with Larson, when he had the watch on him, obviously. Somebody brought that up the other day. It's in the rules. Why isn't it being enforced? Because of who it is? Oh, because of everything else but the sport. But the merit. But what's supposed to be right? You know, America and merit are very similar because it's supposed to represent, you know, earning it, building it on your own, creating who you are as an individual, actually, actual sort of societal-based competition. And when you start judging those people differently for something else besides what they do on the track, that's, that's when you're pissing on merit you're pissing on freedom you're pissing on righteousness you're you're pissing on competition that's what i think that's my opinion uh anyways ladies and gentlemen sorry for it to get so uh riled up there this this that situation for it to be labeled as bullying a kid is disgusting for what i experienced that night and what i saw that is disgusting for it to be labeled that way and i'll 100% jump all over that um to defend what happened that night. So, um, anyways, thanks for tuning in. We, we did just get it over an hour. Links are in the description to join the support. We will update you on this purse swing if the purse people watch this and get too offended because they're like, wow, that dude can get mad. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I am from Texas. And it ain't all about steers and queers. I guarantee you that one. Uh, but uh, the, the, the war for Texas was real. Dallas and Fort Worth is all over a general who lost a wife to Dallas. 
and they literally created a city of Dallas and Fort Worth. It's all over a woman, regardless. Um, no, we will see about this perk deal. Like I said, 95% sure we're going to be riding across the desert, hopefully documenting it all, showing all the cool things on the way to the Western Australian area. Won't be dealing with some of this nepotism monarchy BS that we see here anyways, but um, that will be extremely fun. The Brisbane idea, the February 24th date at Toowoomba, we'll see. And once again, tune into these live streams. It is, like I said, the only true way to watch uh, the Australian racing scene over there right now, Toowoomba, and uh, also uh, Bunbury, going to be on Clay Purview, clayperview.com uh, to check that out and get your purchase in. I know it may be a little hard to go late on a uh, Thursday night, or wait, yeah, on a Thursday night. Sorry, just look down. Oh, wait, is this Friday? Sorry, I'm still on this Australia deal. I woke up today at 4 o'clock, went straight to work, and then I'll be up working on th on things after this, watching the race, researching. I've been going to sleep around 5 to 8 o'clock in the morning every day right now, uh, just adjusting to that Australian time so when I get there, I can hit the ground running, no time adjustment, no mental kind of fog, um, and, and that's been my plan. But luckily, we're doing all this preparation, it looks like, to be there for more than just the classic, the title race, the weekend following and then the trek all the way over to Western Australia to check out that racing scene in Perth and Bunbury. Once again, I'll let y'all know on the Brisbane situation. I really do want to do it. It sounds fun. I want to get all I can get while I'm over there. I, like I said, I jumped at the beginning of all this. I jumped off a damn cliff, threw the money out the window, bank account out the window. And luckily, thanks to, thanks to some good people of the world, uh, this parachute... They've been throwing little pieces of parachutes to me on the way down, and we almost got this bitch constructed before we slam into the ground. So anyways, and it looks like we may be taking off. Hell, I may be jumping on a plane like Vin Diesel. You know, I'm jumping on the edge of a helicopter. We're about to fly off and take off here over here in Australia. It could be extremely fun. Uh, I look forward to it. Uh, hopefully, y'all do as well. Once again, links in the description to join the support. Direct links are what's going to help the most in this trip to Australia, so that is going to be the PayPal and the Venmo Links in the description. If you want to join the channel, it's always perfectly fine. That definitely is the long-term support of the show, the Chaz we got going on here. Um, links are uh, actually button below, I believe, here for membership. That'll get your name up there on the top. Also, like and share. If you can't afford a damn dollar to help the show out, that is fine. Sharing the word, spreading the word, getting this dirt track thing out there is the best thing. I hear a lot of new people who tune in and watch me for the first time. Like I'll hear about guys who are like mechanics, and they'll put me on at the shop or whatever, and then... All of a sudden, the guys at the shop are listening to what I got to say, and they're really getting into it, and they're into this dirt track thing all of a sudden because of what I'm talking about. So think about that. Sharing it around is actually reaching that 80%, and that's what I've always been about is reaching that 80%. And hopefully we can get this little 20% of the dirt track world to wake up to some of the things that, you know, we've been lacking in reaching that. But anyways, anyways. Thanks for tuning in. As always, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to subscribe. Go check out the Spotify and all that. Down of These Roots just came out. Look up the Chaz. All the music action is over there. We may have a new song coming up here very shortly, possibly before we head off to Australia. We will see about that, and we will see you next time. Take care, ladies and gentlemen. As long as we make the show, we can be the biggest.